Okay, you can open up your Bibles today to Psalm 138. And we begin our study in Psalm 138, verse 1. This is our 65th study in the book of Psalms. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 138, verse 1. I give thee thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing thy praise. Gods, here in verse 1, refers to angels. David wants the angels in heaven to hear him praise God. David wanted the angels to know that he thinks God is worthy to be praised. Verse 2, I bow down toward thy holy temple and give thanks to thy name for thy steadfast love and thy faithfulness. For thou hast exalted above everything thy name and thy word. What a tremendous validation this is for Holy Scripture. God has elevated His word above all things. God wants us to know just how important His word is to Him. He wants us to know that He honors His word no matter what. He wants us to know that we can count on His word to be true and that it is the final authority for all faith and morals. 3. On the day I called, thou didst answer me, my strength of soul, thou didst increase. When we pray to God, God hears right away. On the day I prayed, you heard me. When we pray to God, He hears right away. And He answers right away too. Now, He answers yes or no, um, or even when he doesn't be when it doesn't seem like he is saying anything yes or no he is still saying he's still saying something he's still saying trust me he's saying wait and just trust me so he answers yes he answers no and if you don't hear anything at all his answer is wait and trust me verse 4 all the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, for they have heard the words of thy mouth. Sooner or later, all people, including important political leaders, will know that God's word, the word that they have heard from the Lord, is as good as gold. Sooner or later, everyone will know that God keeps His promises and God executes His threats. It may be too late for some to do anything about their faith, but they will know that God is a God of His Word. It's good to know that in advance so that you can do still prepare for eternity. Verse 5 And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, He regards the lowly but the haughty he knows from afar. God is appreciated by those who recognize how infinitely great he is and how in spite of his greatness he cares for and honors the humble. It's amazing really how God is. Jesus said if you want to be great then become a servant. God is great because he is God. But he reveals part of his greatness in his love for the lowly and how he serves his creation. 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou dost preserve my life. Thou dost stretch out thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand delivers me. No one would choose trouble. And yet, a Christian can experience the closeness of God in hard times more than in any other time. It is strange, really is, but dark days can really be some of the most peaceful days because God is right there helping us to get through them. Verse 8 The Lord will fulfill His purpose for me. Thy steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of Thy hands. And God doesn't. God does not quit on us. He finishes what He starts. 
if that's what we want. The Bible says that the wicked will not live out half their days, but God finishes what he starts in those who love him. In spite of their weakness and failures, God will be with them until the very end. Psalm 139, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. You know, we are all open books to God. God has us memorized. He knows what we think, and He knows what we do, before we even think about doing it. The good news is, He still loves us. How many other people that would know us that well, inside and out, would still love us? Verse 2. Thou knowest when I sit down, and when I rise up. Thou discernest my thoughts from afar. God knows when we leave, and when we return. He knows what we're going to do, even before the thought enters our mind to do it. That's how far ahead God is of us. Verse 3. Thou searchest out my path, and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. God's presence around us is sort of like the air. He is all around us all the time. When we stray from His path, He's still with us on our path. We take Him everywhere we go. If we get so busy that we forget about Him, He still remembers us. 4. Even before a word is on my tongue, lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. How many multiplied hundreds of trillions of words do we speak in our lifetime? God knows each one. He knows, and He could tell you the exact date, day, and minute, and second, you spoke your first word and your last word and everyone in between. I could say, Lord, what word did I speak on? I don't know, February 3rd, 1963? And he would know it without even having to look it up. Isn't that amazing? Verse 5. Thou dost beset me behind and before, and layest thy hand upon me. If we could see into the spiritual realm of eternity and see into the spiritual realm of God's omnipresence, we would be absolutely amazed. We really would. We would look next to us, and we would see God. We would look behind us to where we had been, and we would see God. And we would look to where we are going, down the road, and we would see God. God has us covered from every angle. You say, Marat, you lost me. Well, you're not alone. I lost myself. But it's true. Six. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. See, he, he was lost too. It is high. I cannot attain it. David says, he says the same thing. It's too much. He says, I can't handle it. Some people refuse to believe in a God that they can't understand. I wouldn't want to believe in a God who I could understand because that would mean that I was as smart as him and then we'd all be in trouble 7 whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence in other words is there any place where we could go to escape God answer no trying to get out of the presence of God is like the fish in the ocean trying to get out of the presence of water it can't because it's surrounded by water. 8. If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, thou art there. The Voyager spacecraft that was launched back in the mid-70s, I think it was, is by now heading pretty close anyway to the edge of our solar system. It has gone billions of miles, actually about 9 billion miles since it left earth but it is still in the presence of God you can't go high enough or low enough to get away from God if people make it to Mars someday 
and they sin on that planet, God's going to see it. And He's going to write it down. Mars isn't out of God's jurisdiction. No place is out of God's jurisdiction. You can't get away from them. Nine. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy right hand shall lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Even when we are alone, we are not alone. You can explore new places and even get lost in those places. But God isn't lost. And He is leading, even when we don't know where we are or where we are going. 11 and 12. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light light about me is night, even the darkness is not dark to thee, the night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with thee. God even sees us in the dark. Darkness and light are all the same to God. When people sin under the cover of darkness, they are doing it in broad daylight, right on Main Street as far as God is concerned. 13. For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst knit me together in my mother's womb. God doesn't just watch us and listen to us. And He isn't just with us. All those things are true. But it's much more. God also put us together. He is familiar with every single cell in our body. He knows all there is to know about us. He understands us physically. And He understands us spiritually. He knows how we think and how we reason. And He knows what we can and what we cannot do physically. 14. I praise Thee for Thou art fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are thy works thou knowest me right well what a masterpiece God put together when he made us our skeleton has been called an engineer's dream it's a frame for our body protects our vital organs it with the help of muscles and tendons and ligaments which are attached to it allows us to move and lift and reach and whatever else we have to do what, a, what an amazing design. Our skull protects our brain. Our rib cage protects the other vital organs. It's pretty clear. God did a nice job designing and building us. 14. I praise thee, for thou art fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are thy works. Thou knowest me right well. And then verse 15. My frame was not hidden from thee. When I was being made in secret, intricately wrought, in the depths of the earth and so like an artist who doesn't let anyone see his work before it's done some artists are that way aren't they and they won't let anybody see their work their painting until it's completely done then they'll unveil it well in the same way God forms us in the secret place of our mother's womb and then when he is done he unveils us we are born 16 thy eyes beheld my unformed substance In thy book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. As wonderful as we are, as great a work of creation as we are, our days are still numbered. God has a book of the living, and before we are even born, all our days are recorded. He knows all the thoughts that we will think, and all, the, all of the decisions, right and wrong, that we will make. And they are in that book. And so nothing that we do or experience, including our own death, takes God by surprise. He's got it all marked out. It surprises us, but it doesn't surprise God. Not at all. He's, he's seen it all coming. Verse 17. How precious to me are thy thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Someone says... God knows what I'm doing and God knows what I'm thinking I don't like that David liked it he was blessed by the idea that God thought about him sure God doesn't like it when we sin but he also knows our heart when we want to please him but fail 
He knows that also. And He knows when we confess too. God cares about us. That's why He thinks about us all the time. God thinks about His friends. Verse 18. If I could count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. If you could count all the little grains of sand on all the beaches of the entire world, you would have accomplished something pretty big. You would have counted a huge number. But the number of thoughts that God has about us is even larger than that number. 19. Oh, that thou wouldest slay the wicked, O God, and that men of blood would depart from me. Men of blood refers to murderers. You know, I can understand why he is so disgusted with that. How disgusting it is to David to see someone destroy out of hatred something that he admired so much, namely God's wonderful creation, man. He doesn't want around. He doesn't want to be around those who would willfully destroy what God so creatively made. 20. Men who maliciously defy thee, who lift themselves up against thee for evil. People who love God do not want to hear someone say bad things about God. They don't want to hear him take hear them take his name in vain. If someone used the name of the person you love, you love them best. Someone used that person's name as a curse word? I don't think you would like it too much. And if Jesus means something more to us than a religious figure, it will bother us when someone dishonors his name as well. How dare anybody use the name of the God of the universe, the creator and sustainer of all things, as a curse word? 21. Do I not hate them that hate thee, O Lord? And do I not loathe them that rise up against thee? Again, if we don't hate those who hate and dishonor God, then how deep, really, are our feelings for God in the first place? We should pray for God-haters and be kind to God-haters, but we sure don't have to like them. 22. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. See, not all hatred is sin. Hatred should be aimed at what the bad people are doing rather than at the people themselves. That's something to remember. David hated the fact that some people treated God badly. 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. In other words, God, check me out close. Examine me. Show me if I have any bad thoughts or bad attitudes. He's saying, show me areas where I need to improve. You know, it's pretty tough. Pretty tough to know if we are being right or wrong unless we ask God to examine us because the Bible says that our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked we can even sincere people can lie to themselves and see themselves better than what they really are that's why we have to use the word of God and the spirit of God combined with the word of God to examine us to see how we are doing well we'll pick it up in Psalm 1